The feature section of analysis is the most important part. It's probably going to be the part you spend the most time on, and it's probably going to be the largest. So this is a really crucial section and requires um, a lot of uh, description, justification, and research. For every single feature, you need to um, explain what the feature is as precisely as you can, and explain why it's needed, giving as much justification as you can, linking back to research if possible, um, and then, most importantly, explain that the feature is computable. Now, this part I will explain in a bit more detail, but some examples of how you could show a feature is computable is by finding example code to have it done, do some little prototypes of your own, um, linking back to any research you found, any websites which show that it can be done, uh, explanations of key algorithms, and APIs that can be used to implement it. So we'll look at that in a bit more detail. So explain the feature. Um, this is easily overlooked because you need to clearly show what this feature is doing. It's not always obvious. You might feel it's obvious, but it not necessarily is to someone reading your coursework. So you need to say um, what the feature is and how that feature is going to be used. Try and be as precise as you can be. Try and split it up as much as you can do as well, because this will aid implementation. It will also aid, aid um, decomposition as well later on. And it's going to include uh, your user interface, any input output you've got, and all the processing behind the scenes as well. For each feature, you need to explain why has it been included, linking back to research on your existing applications, and user research. Now, User research is one of those interesting ones. You don't necessarily always have to do it, okay? So you're not gonna get mocked down if you don't do it. However, sometimes features are really hard to justify why they should be included. An easy way of actually getting that justification might be do a bit of user research and ask your users which features you think are the most, part, um, most important, and then you can do a few little graphs, a little bit of analysis, bang, there's your um, justification for this section. So. You might find that when you're writing this section, you think, ah, actually, I need to do some user research as well to kind of back up my justifications. The next part of this is really explain that each, how each feature is computable. How can this actually be coded? Now, the best way to show that a feature can be done is through coding algorithms, okay? So if you find an algorithm which shows it can be done, well, it's then a very clear justification, isn't it? Um, if you're starting to try and waffle about it, it becomes harder and actually you end up writing more. So ultimately, this is all down to research. So you're gonna be doing this research anyway because if you don't do this research, you will not be able to code it. So effectively, we're formalizing that research and awarding marks to boots. So it's common at this stage um, to maybe do some coding as well, okay? So maybe as proof of concept. Uh, and a classic example will be, um, you're gonna be implementing a user interface, you have to do in a user interface, um, and you're probably gonna to have to learn how to code in that user interface. So for example, let's say you learn QT5, you'll probably do some example programs. This then can become proof that it's possible, okay? So it becomes a little proof of concept code. So, some ways you can justify if a feature is computable. Uh, the most obvious one is example code. So find code on the internet to demonstrate that it can be done. Now this is actually okay. Some people might think, well, isn't this cheating? I'm finding code uh, on the internet, isn't that cheating? Don't we get told off GCC for doing that? Um, it's not cheating, but you must reference it, okay? It is normal for programmers to find example code of how to do things, okay? It's, it's not unusual in industry to do this. Um, but you can't copy and paste it, obviously. You can't just simply say, yeah, I'm gonna use this code and that's my program finished. Um, so you have to reference it, but it can be used as evidence that it can be done. And it also will help you get ideas on how you could code it as well. So prototyping is another classic way. Now, when I say prototyping at this stage, I'm not talking about your big prototypes that you'd be coding uh, during development. What I'm talking about is a very small little um, sample bit of code just to see and test out ideas, okay? So it's not gonna be a massive amount of code. We're talking about maybe a, uh, a couple of hours worth of coding, maybe a day at maximum, um, but it's just practicing and trying out ideas. That, if it works, can then be used as evidence that can be done. Research is key, um, so if you find any um, websites which explain how this works and how it could be done, you can summarize that research and then again, reference back to it. 
explanations of key algorithms. Um, so if you find algorithms out there which will do it, for example, if you're looking at shunting yard algorithm uh, to uh, be able to evaluate a, a billion algebra expression, um, then you can find the algorithm, explain how the algorithm works, uh, and then link back to research uh, and reference it as well. The final thing you can do is um, linking back to API. So you, you might find that in order to implement a feature, you can use an API to help you. As an example, maybe um, you want to connect to a social media account and you need an API to do so. Um, you might use Twitter, for example, and there's a Tweepy, I think it's called, um, which will allow you to actually do that. So APIs, um, a little summary of how the API works can be a justification um, that feature can be implemented. So every app will have a key feature which is complex. Um, if you don't have a complex feature, then you're not meeting the complex requirements of the coursework. So you, you will have one. It is that feature which requires the most research. It's the thing that's going you're gonna find the hardest to implement. So it makes sense you do the most research on that feature. The reason I'm, I raise this is because if you're gonna put lots of effort into one feature, it should be a complex one, okay? Some of the other features are gonna be easy. You know, there's not every feature is gonna be hard to implement. And it makes no sense to spend loads and loads of time explaining that feature, showing code examples, and doing loads of research on those simple features, and neglecting the complex ones. So it is about prioritizing your time a little bit. So that's the reason I'm raising uh, it here. So in your write-up, you need to have a subsection for every single feature, okay? The reason I say have a subject for every feature is because it makes your course look really easy to follow, okay, for the moderator and also for yourself. It also is a very easy way of making sure you've covered every feature as well. So you describe the feature, explain how it'll work, justify why that feature is needed and explain why you've included it, and finally, justify why each feature is computable using code examples, prototypes, research, algorithms, APIs, links to existing solutions to back up your arguments to show that it can be done. So just to kind of summarize the high mark bands, um, you have identified the essential features, okay? So essential features basically mean the features that must be there. If you miss maybe like a, a small, tiny little feature that isn't that important, but you're gonna put it in anyway, that's fine. You know, we're talking about the core features. You need to explain those choices. You need to describe and justify the features to make this problem solvable, computational methods, explain why it's meaningful to computational approach. Okay, now it does say computational methods here, um, and I just wanna uh, do a little side uh, mention on this. When it says computation methods, what it really means is, can it be, is it computable? It doesn't mean, does it use backtracking, data mining, and things like that. I mean, the reality of the situation is, no one is gonna be writing an app that does data mining, okay? It's, it's too complex. Backtracking, very unlikely, okay? It's very likely you need backtracking in your system. Divide and conquer, maybe, you might need that. Um, it isn't the case that you're gonna be using every single computation method, you may end up using none of them. Every program is different, and you don't want to shoehorn a weird computation method in just for kicks. So it really is meaning, is it computable, rather than do you need a computation method as defined by OCR. So just a few tips, um, write subsections out first and get it checked out. Is this the complete list, okay? Um, is there too many and too little, okay? This will just save you time, okay? Quick check with your teacher, two seconds, and it will make sure you've got every single part. Describe one, get it checked out, okay? Maybe pick your most complex feature first. Are you on the right lines? Are your justifications enough? Have you written it well? Okay, get feedback early on so then you can just crack on and do the rest of it. Make sure you explain your choices and backing up justifications with as much evidence and references as you can. So just a little suggest, uh, sorry, a little suggested structure, get my words out. Create a subsection of every feature, expl have explanation of feature, what is the feature, how it's gonna be used, and a justification why it's needed, and evidence that the feature is computable, um, research into that feature, and the algorithm you're gonna be using, sample code, prototypes, description of why you feel it's computable. Um, and have every feature following the same pattern. If you're consistent with that, you're not gonna miss anything and it's gonna be easier to mark as well. 